Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to install Free Radius in Daylo Radius uh, on Ubuntu 22.04. The reason I'm making another Free Radius tutorial is because I got a comment on the original one um, and someone reached out trying to see how to install uh, Daylo Radius, which is basically a like an extra thing to Free Radius. It's kind of an add-on, if you will. Um, it's a third-party thing though, but basically once you install Free Radius, you install this other um, program that will put it all into a nice web browser for you or sorry a website that you can go on and you can like change radius settings and that kind of stuff too so it's pretty convenient if you don't know too much about uh, sql or how to program a database or whatever uh, you still have to have the database as the back end but it kind of connects the database and provides a nice user experience so if you want to have I don't know, a manager or someone manage all your Wi-Fi accounts, they can do that without having much technical knowledge, which is really nice. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, um, first we're going to install all of these things here. It's a lot to install, it's a lot to type. So a lot of these commands are going to be copied and pasted from um, the tutorial. I will link that down below if you want. Uh, it's a full written guide on how to do exactly what I'm doing. Although in the written guide, I do not go into depth on how to manage uh, Dallow Radius. Um, if like in terms of setting it up and actually creating accounts and stuff on there So if you want to see that continue watching this video, it'll be near the end, but like I said all of the um, Steps I'm going to do is documented on my online documentation and is going to be released with this video So it'll be linked down below by the time this video is up that will be available for you as well so we are currently installing all of the packages before recording this video uh, I was able to fully update the system. It's a fresh install, fresh ISO from Ubuntu, so everything is completely up to date. All right, so we're gonna say sudo system ctl enable dash dash now Apache two two in signs sudo system ctl enable free radius. There we go. We're gonna let those run, and the next thing we're going to do is set up our database. We're gonna say sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation and we're going to say uh, we're just going to click enter um, we're not going to provide a root password we're going to say no to this first question no to the second question and then yes to all of these other questions below all right so that is fully configured a database now that is not the most secure thing um, there are much more secure ways you can do that. You can actually provide a root password um, that is required uh, when accessing the database, but for the purposes of this tutorial video, I'm not going to go into how to do that. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna log into our database. So sudo mysql-u root-p, and since we have no password, we're going to click enter. As you can see, we have made it into the um, database here. So we're gonna say sudo, or sorry, we're gonna say create database radius. We're going to, oops. I spelled that wrong. Create database radius. We are going to create user radius at localhost, and it's going to be identified. Identified by password. You're going to want to swap out the password. You're going to want to swap out a lot of this stuff. The usernames can stay the same, but the passwords I would highly recommend you swap out going to grant all privileges on the radius database anything on the radius database to uh, radius at localhost and we're going to flush privileges and we're going to quit so basically that was just configuring that the database there um, now we're going to tell free radius or sorry we're going to link uh, free radius with the database so we're going to say sudo su and that is going to make us the root user Next, we're going to copy, I would copy this from the website, the documentation, as it's gonna be a lot easier. It is going to basically, this is going to link it. As you can see right there, it's going to link it, click enter. We're going to now exit. Now we're going to make a symbolic link, which basically links some directories together. So basically we're taking the SQL um, module um, the mod that is available and we're making it enabled by linking it to the enabled directory Okay, and then now we're going to sudo nano etc free radius 3.0 Mods enabled and we're going to edit the SQL mod Just like last time we're going to search up these things and we are going to modify it 
uh, as we need to. We're going to change this to MySQL. Uh, we're also going to locate where it says, okay, I should have done a more specific search. There we go. Uh, uncomment and that one. I'm doing Control W on my keyboard to search. We're going to search for, oops, read clients. Make sure that is enabled. Uh, check this to make sure that is set to NAS, and that is good to go. So now we need to go find where it says TLS. There we go. So unless you are actually using a TLS certificate to connect to your database, which in this case we are not, um, you need to comment all of these out just like so, and you can leave warnings uh, unchecked. Now we're going to find our connection info right here. Now if you had an external SQL database, you could also use that instead. You just have to provide the connection information. All right, uh, control X, Y, and enter. Next, we're going to paste these in. That is just changing um, permissions on some files. Um, now, on the original tutorial, I have you install phpMyAdmin here which basically is going to, basically is Delo Radius, but um, it's not quite the same in the sense that it it, it is not um, as user-friendly still. It's just a nice interface for the raw SQL database. So um, I'm not going to include that in my written documentation for this or in this part of the tutorial because if you're using Delo Radius, you will not really need phpMyAdmin, but if you would like to install phpMyAdmin too, uh, you can just go back into the original tutorial that is on my documentation site, uh, check that out, and get that installed. But like I said, that is optional because we really don't need that for the purposes of this video. So next what I'd like to do, um, if you're using free radius for VLAN assignment, which is likely what you're doing with a radius server, um, where it like dynamically assigns your VLANs based on your login, you're going to want to go here and edit this file and we need to find use tunneled reply, and I believe it's a second occurrence. Yep, and we're gonna change that to yes, control X, Y, enter. Um, basically that is just saying for the EAP module that we are going to use PEAP uh, to assign VLANs, basically. So that is that, and after you made that change, you just say pseudo service free radius reload. And that is going to reload your changes. All right, so now we're on the part where we're going to install Delo Radius. Um, I'm using version 1.3 um, in this video, and I believe, if I did my research correctly, they're actually using Docker for this now. Um, I think this method is kind of a lot easier, so we're going to be going with this method where we clone it from their GitHub, but um, the like official um, way to do it now is through their Docker. I'm going to click Enter. It's going to download the code. It's going to put it in the directory and unzip it. Now we're going to run this command, which is going to take basically the database schema and throw it all into uh, free radius. And so the next command, sudo mysql u root p radius uh, contrib database mysql and dollar radius. Enter, enter. All right. Um, next, we're going to uh, go back home, which is you just type in cd. We're going to say sudo move dollar radius uh, var www html. And actually, I'm going to add another step here. We're going to say sudo move var www html uh, dollar radius. We're going to say just change that to dollar radius, just like so. All right, now we're going to uh, change the permissions of it. We're going to say chown dash r. Uh, we're going to make the owner www data, which is like the web uh, user, I guess you could say. That's pretty commonly used across Linux. We're going to change that to dollar radius. So we're going to copy the sample PHP file, and we're going to make that the default one right there. And now we're going to change the permissions on it to that right there. All right. Now we're going to edit that file. And all you have to do in this file is just scroll down here. Um, it does absolutely look like a lot here. You need to select your password. Uh, make sure your host name is correctly. Make sure your, ho your port is correct. Your user, which our database user is actually Radius. All right, we're going to do Control X, Y, and Enter. And now we are going to restart Free Radius in Apache 2.
just like so. All right, so logging into it as simple as going into your web browser, you need to find its IP here, um, and adding dialog radius to the end, and the default login is administrator, password is radius, once you log in, you are good to go. Next, we're gonna go over here to management, we're gonna go over to NAS, we're going to create a new NAS on the left, and that's kind of how it works, by the way. So here's basically um, the different options you can do at the left, and here's the operations you can do. So um, essentially, if you want to think about it in a SQL database, basically this is a select command, this is a um, new command, or add command, sorry. This is an update command and a delete command. So more or less, like in most windows that you'll find, you'll have pretty similar um, uh, operations available. So we're going to create a new NAS. So a NAS is basically just a server that is going to be connecting to it. So we're going to say this is an other type server. We're going to call this um, router. Our secret is going to be super secret. Um, so basically, for me, most of this does not matter, um, even in my deployed um, scenarios, because the chances of somebody having the same IP address as me, the same public IP address, first of all, is zero, and second of all, the secret, um, and second of all, the secret, like, it doesn't need to be anything super special, I, I don't think, but, um, if you want to secure your installation more, of course, you can add, um, you can add whatever you want, make it more secure. Uh, we're going to copy the IP address here, and I'm just going to say this is the router. We're going to apply, and if we go back to list here, it's going to say we have a NAS at that IP. Um, if So a quick note, if you are running this over the internet, um, which in my case scenario, uh, this instance of free radius is going to basically be under a public IP address, like I'm going to port forward this, um, you can add the public IP of the other site you're connecting to. Now, uh, if you are using this on your local network um, and you have ubiquity access points, you want to add a um, IP host for every single access point you have and every and all the secrets need to be the same. And you also need to add a NAS for your um, router, like your ubiquity router. Uh, it's kind of weird, but that's what I've noticed. If you want this to work, you have to have um, a NAS for all of your access points. All right, so to create a user, we're going to go to Management, uh, Profiles. We're going to duplicate the existing profile just because it's going to be a lot easier. We're going to say Admin, click Apply. Now we're going to go to List Profiles, select Admin, and Edit. Our auth type is going to be Accept. And we can remove this second one, I think. We're going to Apply. Okay, so this is kind of odd here. I just added one, um, forgot to show you how, but basically to add an attribute, which basically is how the radius server responds to a user request. Uh, to add an attribute, you go here to attributes. You're gonna go uh, highlight the quickly locate. We're going to say tunnel medium type add. We're going to select six for this. Our operators equal sign target is reply going to apply this and as you can see if we go back to reply attributes now we have two we have tunnel type and tunnel medium type you're going to need three total I'm going to add the last one here this last one is going to be your VLAN number which is tunnel private group ID I'm going to add attribute I'm gonna say VLAN 17 is what I want is our value operator is equal sign target is reply we're going to apply that go back to reply attributes and here we go you can see our tunnel type is 13 tunnel medium type is 6 you need both of those our tunnel private group IDs, our VLAN number, that will be whatever you want your group to be. So, what this all means, if maybe I can remove this. Yeah, okay, so I would just say have one off type, sorry. Um, basically what all of this means, the thing we just added for the profile, a profile is kind of like a network, is what I would say. A network or group. I, I use them as networks, um, but maybe it's different for you. So we're gonna go back to users here, list users. I have a user here for Beam Networks that I created. We're going to edit this user. Um, it's currently disabled because it's in the disabled group. So we're going to go back here to Groups, and we're going to select Admin for our group and Apply. That is going to enable our user, and there we go. So that's all. If we go back to Users, we're going to List Users. So let me explain. The Beam Networks user is in the admin group. If we go to profiles here, our groups, um, admin, edit profile, reply attributes, it's a lot, sorry. 
Um, it's under tunnel private group ID 17. So any user on this um, admin group is going to get assigned to VLAN number 17. So let's go here, let's duplicate proof profile. We're going to duplicate admin. We're going to say staff, apply. Now we're gonna to go to list profiles, go to staff, edit profile, reply attributes. We're gonna change this to 20, apply. Let's go back to users here. So let me show you. So if I go to list users here, Veeam Networks, edit user. Currently it is on admin, assigned to VLAN 17. If I switch this to staff, click apply, the user Beam Networks is now on the staff VLAN, or VLAN 20. So this is really cool and pretty easy to use. So let's say you had a manager at your company that is just in charge of modifying and adding users, we'll say, right? They can do a new user quick add and I'm going to say username, password, clear text password and it, it, just select your group right here. So um, let's say staff, we're gonna say this is Joe and password is Joe, we're going to apply. And let's go back to list users here. As you can see, Joe with the password of Joe has been added to the staff group, just like that. Your manager or whatever can do a quick user add and that's all you have to fill out to create a user. And when you go to profiles, you can create more networks or profiles or groups of people. Um, that's also why these are nice because you can do groups of people so you can have different departments or um, whatever and if your department ever changed its network or something you can switch the whole department at once which is pretty sweet so it kind of saves you a lot of time um, and that's really cool and that's why Daylo Radius is pretty awesome because I'd say it's pretty easy to use once you figure out the interface and yeah um, we can close out of that if we go over here to config operators list operators as you can see we have an administrator user you're going to want to do a new operator, set a username, password, and you can actually give them certain user privileges. So this is the last thing I'm gonna show. I'm trying to keep this tutorial short here, but um, let me show you. So like, let's say you had a manager that you wanna create an account for. So we're gonna say username, manager, password, manager, right? So contact name, you could fill in if you wanted to. We're gonna to go to ACL settings. And as you can see, all of this is enabled by default. We're going to go down here, apply, and apply. Oop, I already applied it. Never mind. So let's open up Microsoft Edge. Just as a different browser, we're going to copy this. Um, and I just wanted to show you. So I just create an, created an account for a manager. And I just want to show you, you can give them different access. So manager, manager. I did not show it here, but I wanted to show that the manager account has less access. And you can create accounts just to have lower access managers so they can just add users or just do lower level things. That way you could still have your administrator account, but someone else can manage your users. So that's just kind of a um, nice thing that you can do, yeah, that you can use free radius for. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but like I said, I think that if you can figure it out, it's a pretty easy and powerful tool that you can use for your small business or whatever. Um, and Dalo Radius does a lot more than that too. They do billing, accounting, and graphing, and all that kind of stuff too. Um, I think it's made for like internet service providers that you would use like a PPPoE connection kind of um, where you have to log in to your account uh, over that network connection. I don't know. I haven't gotten to that part yet, but that's just kind of what Daylo Radius is, how to set it up, how to add users. I apologize that this video is very long, um, but hopefully you should be able to understand how to use Daylo Radius in conjunction with Free Radius. So. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next video.